Hello, I'm James Heyer. Welcome to Marketing Dividends, where we look at marketing's new and expanded contribution to company growth. I'm joined this week by Ines Kingsmill, Director of Corporate Marketing, Telstra. Great to talk to you. Hi, James. Ines, how is marketing's contribution to growth evolving at Telstra? I think that the best way to characterise the evolving role of marketing at Telstra is that we're undergoing a transformation. A transformation in the expectation of the role that we play within the business. And that specifically, I think, relates to the ability of marketing to represent the customer agenda in what we do and how that plays a role in our growth strategies. So in this transformation, where have you been coming from as a marketing team? If I look back a few years, I think it would be right to say that the marketing function was viewed more as quite simply the promotions P, um, not so much uh, involved in shaping what products and offers might look like. Um, we're more concerned with how those products and offers are now shaped so that they actually deliver a much better customer experience. Uh, we're also more involved in shaping the business agenda and looking where value pools lie. So the business has some kind of radar to, to look to with respect to where investments are made. So characteristically from just communications and, and promotion to really being ingrained in contributing to shaping business strategies go-to-market approaches and the way that our products and services actually meet customer needs. So outside of your typical marketing remit, what areas of the business are you shaping? The role that we play in building advocacy amongst our customers is something that is particularly important uh, for marketing to play a strong contributing role to. Um, as I say, when the marketer's natural perspective is to champion the customer, and we constantly have that customer experience lens in mind. It allows us to work in a way with um, our product teams and also our pricing teams to be able to make sure that what we're designing in terms of products and offers is actually going to be something that is valuable for the customer um, rather than something that we want to create. And I think it's fair to say that Part of that transformation that Telstra has been on over the past five years in particular has been moving from being very much a product and engineering-led organisation, which of course is our heritage, but becoming much more of a sales and marketing-led organisation. And the reason that we've undergone that very deliberate business shift is because to truly be focused on customer needs and customer service, you have to have a sales and marketing led lens. I think that the opportunity for, now, for us now is to say, well, what next? How do we evolve beyond just functional customer service delivery as a means to building advocacy and therefore value for the business? But how do we ev evolve that to uh, using customer insights uh, to really shape experiences that build longer term, lifetime relationships with our brand and with our business. And that's very exciting territory that we find ourselves leading at the moment. With all of this change, do you feel marketing needs a rebrand? I think that marketing does need a rebrand. Um, uh, there are lots of different views of the role that marketing can play. And um, speaking with different CEOs of different uh, companies in different industries of different sizes, um, it's very clear that there's a, a huge range of perceptions of the role that marketing actually plays within those businesses. So if I think about Telstra, marketing is very much front and centre. It hasn't always been, but is very much front and centre with driving the growth agenda. Um, but in other organisations, marketing is still viewed as, you know, the, the promotion department. Um, and I think that that really undervalues the contribution that marketing professionals um, are able to make to driving growth and creating real value um, for an organisation and its customers. So the future of marketing is here, it's just not evenly distributed across various companies right now. I think that that's um, a fair way to, to put it. Um, we do still need to elevate the perception of the, the role that the marketing profession and the marketing leadership 
plays. Uh, if you think about uh, the boards of ASX 200 companies, for example, marketing leaders and the discipline of a marketing professional is hugely underrepresented still on those boards. Um, most of the board composition of those large companies, certainly within Australia, is still comprised of people with finance, operations or general management types of backgrounds. And when you put a marketing perspective into a board mix, um, with the board's role helping to shape strategy and future direction for the, the, the company, you, you get a, a diverse uh, perspective that you just don't get um, from a, a operations or finance uh, professional mindset. And I think it's through that diversity of balancing those different points of view that you actually get that real richness in what the strategy for an organisation to grow looks like. Some of your peers have talked about marketing having to grow up to be able to connect with the board and they talk about learning a new language. Has this been your experience at Telstra? Uh, definitely. I think for, for marketing to have the credibility and to earn the right to make a strategic contribution to the business's future and its growth, we have to be speaking the language of the board. Um, one of the things that we particularly have uh, made very clear in our own marketing vision is that we are here to create shareholder value. Um, build customer loyalty and advocacy, and also generate demand, which is probably more traditionally what marketing has done. But all of those three aspects are important to us as marketers at Telstra. Um, one of the key uh, metrics that we focus on as a marketing organisation, other than the financials of revenue and EBITDA, um, is the net promoter score as a measure of customer advocacy. Uh, going back to the fact that we fundamentally believe that customer advocacy has to underpin any growth that the business is going to be able to achieve, whether that's in the core of our business or whether that's in new growth markets. Um, customer advocacy is strongly related to trust, for example. Um, customer advocacy is very strongly related to um, lifetime value and the future relationship of um, a customer with, with that company. So this is actually quite natural language for us as marketers now at Telstra. Um, it's not so much about clicks to a website and um, uh, marketing measures, although those are important because they build to um, uh, the, the story of uh, building advocacy. But that's not the conversation that we're having in the boardroom. Um, it's not the conversation we're having with our senior leaders. We're very much talking those board level metrics. Marketers have always had problems with soft and hard metrics and advocacy feels to me like it's bordering on soft metrics. How are you convincing the board that leads to bottom line growth? Now, I actually don't believe that our board needs to be convinced that advocacy um, and its measure of uh, net promoter score um, are soft metrics. Um, we've been able to model uh, econometrically that uh, lifetime value of a customer actually increases as advocacy rises. Um, we actually have a very uh, sophisticated research insights and analytics function within the Telstra marketing team. So we've got a very good understanding of um, what the drivers of advocacy are um, and what the attributes are that then help us shape, um, as I say, our go-to-market products and services and solutions um, and our brand focus um, so that we can build the advocacy, build the lifetime value of the customer and improve the growth of the business. Are these the new tools that you're bringing to bear on the marketing function, the econometrics, your modelling? Are, are you building out a different network of influence beyond agencies in your team right now? Certainly, that is a very big part of the contribution that marketing makes across the business. Uh, the richness of the insights that we're able to draw, um, the analytics models that we're able to apply on top of that, um, the econometric modelling that sits within the marketing function is something that sits in the core of our business and is very much um, something that is depended upon in all aspects of our growth strategies. The marketing analytics and insights capability you've 
just discussed. How is that contributing to corporate strategy? Analytics and insights contribute to each of the three pillars of our corporate strategy. Um, firstly, uh, deepening customer advocacy is something that we're absolutely focused on at Telstra. And it's through that, that function that sits within the marketing unit um, in the business that we have a really good understanding of what the drivers of advocacy are. We know what's important to people and we know where we're delivering on that and where we're not. So it also gives us a, a map to be able to go, okay, well, we've got a lot of strength and capability um, that people understand and um, recognise in our network, for example. But people also want the service quality to be improved. Not surprisingly, right? But the, when you deconstruct that and you look at the um, drivers that sit within that, again, it helps us shape products and services and how we go to market. So that's one way how um, our research and insights helps the first pillar of our corporate strategy. When you look at um, growth from our core businesses, uh, the, the modelling work that we do there allows us to look at, at value pools um, and to be able to create the right types of offerings and construct those offerings that we can take to market um, and uh, deliver to, to people in a way that is relevant to their needs. Therefore, their aperture to be able to consider Telstra as the right option is exponentially increased. The other thing that we do in our uh, driving of uh, new growth businesses, which is the third pillar of our corporate strategy, um, is a real understanding of our brand. So as we are entering new growth markets, whether they're domestically or whether they're internationally, our brand plays a very important role in creating permission for us to operate. So again, it's that analysis that we undertake that um, gives us the insight of what drives the brand, brand perceptions, which unlock that permission. Uh, for example, we've recently launched Telstra Health, which is a, um, an integrated and holistic e-health solution that brings together um, the ecosystem of all of the different types of health providers for you know, the person that, that needs these services. You can imagine that unless Telstra had trust associated with its brand, that that would be very difficult for us to do. Um, and equally, as we enter into new markets, specifically in Asia, where we have a, a strong growth ambition, we need to understand what the, um, what the permission is that we have to operate in those markets and what are the market sensitivities that we need to be mindful of as we enter and we grow our, um, our, our business uh, organically or through uh, joint ventures and mergers and acquisitions. There's been an increased range of, of capability that's required of any marketer now. What has prepared this generation's leadership for marketing today? Could I be provocative and, and actually say we're not prepared? It would be fair to say that we're actually the first generation of marketing leadership that hasn't been given the handbook uh, from our, our bosses. Um, the rapidly evolving technology uh, landscape has made it really difficult um, to keep up. Um, it makes it really challenging because the environment is so um, volatile and so rapidly changing all the time. So the reality is that um, we're the first generation of leaders that are going through this type of environment. And that's not to say that we're not learning stuff from our bosses, but it's not learning how to do marketing per se. You know, these are things that uh, actually as a community, we need to come to together on because we're all in this together um, as marketing directors and, and CMOs within within companies. So I think now more, more than ever, there's actually a, a strong need for marketers to maintain an open dialogue and, and share their learnings, share their successes, share their failures, because we're, we're navigating this new world for the first time. So are you writing the playbook then for the next generation? We're writing the playbook um, for this generation. I think that the playbook for the next generation is going to have its own challenges and it's going to be different again. Um, now that said, there are certainly principles uh, that we can you know, pass on to um, within our own teams. Uh, but the next generation of marketing leaders is going to be dealing with something completely different again. There's no playbook for marketers to reference. How are you building capability at Telstra? 
Well, we're making up our own playbook and uh, building marketing capability at Telstra is a really strong focus for us at the moment, actually. Um, we're taking this very seriously. We're a very large marketing team. We're around 350 um, marketers at Telstra, which makes us one of the largest um, marketing teams in the country. But we don't want to be known as the largest um, marketing team. We want to be known as a world-class marketing team. And we're committed to building that world-class capability within our own people in the first instance. So we're actually undertaking a very interesting project right now with uh, the AGSM and IBM design a specifically tailored for Telstra um, marketing leadership and marketing capability uh, program um, that we'll be launching in the next couple of months. Um, and we're very excited about that. And one of the things that has led us to design this program ourselves is that there is no one size fits all solution. Um, and we have felt that the, the best way for us to build that capability and uh, build the, the competency and the expertise in certain aspects of marketing is to build it ourselves with people who um, have a perspective outside of the Telstra pool. Um, hence the partnership with the AGSM and, and IBM who have um, great credentials in doing this. So where people used to pull marketers out of Unilever because it was the school of marketing. Is that what you're hoping for with Telstra without people leaving, obviously? <laughs> Definitely. And, and Unilever runs a fantastic program. And there are other companies. Um, McDonald's runs a, a great one. And you know, in my time at Microsoft, uh, Microsoft ran a, a great program as well. We do want to be the gold standard of marketing capability within this country. And this program is our way of helping us get there. Thank you, Ines. You're welcome. Thank you, James. And thank you for joining us on Marketing Dividends.